Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. And this week, I'm joined by Connor, reunited. He's managed to swim the Irish Sea and make it to GCN Megabase. Yeah, I was about to swim back to Ireland when I saw your new haircut, Ollie. What? Anyway, on the show this week, we have new bikes from Alberto Contador and Lapierre, a new SRAM rear mech, the bike fault, your upgrades, and our main talking point this week. How safe is your helmet? Also, have you shrunk? Well, I did ask for a kind of a bigger chair, you know, but... Oh, you've given me this chair deliberately, haven't you? I'm trying to... <laughs> First up, the results of the poll from last week. We asked you, which bike do you prefer? Pogaccia's yellow uh, Colnago V3 RS or Sam Bennett's customised green S-Works Tarmac? And, well, the result, which one would you go for? Well, obviously I'd go for Sam Bennett's green, custom painted. You know, it's Irish, it's Ireland, Sam Bennett. Well, who else would I go for? I mean, and also, Pogaccia's bike, it was just yellow. Sam had a few details and, you know. All right, little, well, little anyway, bits. Sam Bennett was the winner. Not by much, only 53% versus 47, so it's pretty close, that. But yeah, Sam Bennett won. Well, Ireland's always going to win, Ollie, so no contest. This week, we're looking at helmet safety, thanks to uh, data that's been published by the Virginia Tech uh, Helmet Ratings uh, Safety Lab, which is an independent lab, an independent body that does its own testing on a variety of helmets from various different sports. But we're obviously focusing on the cycling helmet testing. Now, the results and the protocols of these tests are also published, so if you're interested, you can check them out yourself. Each helmet is given a score, and the lower number, the better. And they're also given a star rating out of five. Now, the main thing they're looking to do is to assess a helmet's effectiveness at reducing concussion risk to the wearer from linear accelerations and also rotational velocity of the head. And the latest results suggest that energy absorbing materials like choroid and wave cell make a difference and also anti-slip plane devices like MIPS reduce the likelihood of getting a concussion too. Yeah, which is quite interesting that because I think a lot of people do look, look on them as you know, with some scepticism, those devices and, and things, and you think, is it a marketing gimmick? But this is independent testing, and it does suggest that they do yeah, make a difference, as you say. You can also see a trend whereby the MIPS-equipped helmets are safer than the non-MIPS version of the same lid, which, which I, I happen to find quite interesting. Um, and that's consistent. But the, the, the safest helmet appears to be the Laser G1, which gets a, a rating of, uh, what, nine, 0.7 and 5 stars. But then the top three helmets are also lasers as well. So you've got the Cyclone MIPS and the Century MIPS up there as well. Yeah, super interesting. And also there's plenty of non-premium helmets that are very safe as well. It's good to see, yeah. Yeah, but if we look at your helmet, for example, Ollie, the Giro Aether, yep. it's actually scored very well. It's got a five star rating and 12.5 on the scores, which is a lot better than the older version of the Giro Synth, which scored four stars and 17 on the scores. Yeah, and the non-MIPS version yeah, very important. of the Giro Synth, I should add, the MIPS one does slightly better. The uh, older designs as well don't appear to fare anywhere near as well as the newer designs in terms of safety. So if we look at say the Laser Genesis and the Specialized Echelon 2 have been around quite a while now, both get two star ratings, which is described by Virginia Tech as being adequate. So still safer than no helmet and still decent, but nowhere near the new one. So it's good to see that progress is being made and helmets are actually getting safer and the tech is improving and it's not just that they're getting lighter and more aerodynamic, um, which surprises me. Because I think when I pick a helmet, you know, when I, if I buy a helmet, I, I don't really think about safety. I, I think honestly, that, well, I, maybe I do a bit, but the things that I look for first are how cool does it look? How aero is it? Uh, and then maybe how lightweight it is and then other features, such as, can I store my sunglasses nicely in the vents? Here we go. Anyway, I don't think Ollie's <laughs> alone when he says this because, well, helmet manufacturers, they really are meeting these safety standards, and I think we're trusting them these days to meet the standards too. Mm -hmm. And as this independent testing data shows, they are actually meeting the requirements. Mm. So when we do go to buy a helmet, we're not looking at how safe it is, we're looking at other features. Yeah. Like, like you store your sunglasses. Yeah, and how cool it looks colour it is. Does it match my kit? <laughs>
But how long do helmets last? I mean, we often hear this figure banded around of, you know, you should replace your helmet every four years. But I think a lot of us, and I include myself in this, look at that figure with maybe a hint of skepticism, that maybe it's kind of some conspiracy where helmet manufacturers are trying to get us to part with more cash and buy helmets more regularly, you know? Yeah, but when you do crash, you should replace your helmet. A helmet is a single-use device, so if you do have a crash, no matter how big or small, it's time to get a new helmet. Because I think when I've crashed and hit my head hard, it's sometimes you don't actually realise that you've hit your head because the helmet has just done such a good job. And it might not look like it's broken from the outside, you might not see any cracks that are visible, but on the inside, the EPS, the, the shell inside the helmet, has actually crumpled and broken. Yeah it's, a, yeah, it's a good point. And in terms of the lifespan of a helmet, from a sort of chemistry perspective, uh, a lot of helmets feature EPS in them, or expanded polystyrene. And this lasts an incredibly long time, right? I mean, that's one of the problems for the environment, actually, when it's used to make packaging, um, you know, just coffee cups that are disposable, well, disposable, um, because it doesn't degrade at all in, in the environment. So especially in terms of the lifespan of something like a helmet, the degradation of the EPS, as long as it's not crashed, that isn't gonna be what limits the lifespan of a helmet. So if you don't ride much, your helmet can actually last ages, but extreme changes in temperature, UV, and weather, it can really accelerate changes in your helmet and make it degrade at a quicker rate. Also, if you sweat a lot, if there's lots of salt on the helmet, that can also accelerate the degradation of your helmet. So it'll lead you to having to replace the helmet quicker. Yeah, but that's more so on the plastic shell that covers the EPS and also the uh, straps and things like that. You know, you don't want your strap, if your strap goes, your helmet's dead. But something else that you should definitely keep away from your helmet is organic solvents because, uh, oh, and some inorganic solvents as well. But um, solvents can basically dissolve expanded polystyrene. Um, interesting nerdy fact for you. In the film Alien, when the alien's blood is like super strong acid and it melts through the spaceship, that special effect was actually done by getting expanded polystyrene that looked was painted to look like metal, right? And they just dripped acetone on it. So that's that. what happened. So basically, Connor, after your next night out and you're removing your nail varnish, don't get your nail varnish remover anywhere near your helmet. Okay, I remember that, Ollie. Thanks, thanks for the tip. Science. Okay, for proper fit, cyclists should position their helmet one or two fingers just above the brow line and then tighten it to minimise any rocking. Yeah, so basically, just like Primoz Roglic. He's not going to live in, that one down. In stage 20 time trial. <laughs> I bet he caught a lot of flies I, he, like that. I don't think he used your fingers method, unless he's got really massive fingers. It was like that. So Yumba Visma should have hired me. I'd have been there at the start line. <laughs> he's never going to live that down, is he? No, he's not. Anyway, time for a poll, I think, Ollie. Yes, right. We want to know how old is your helmet? I think uh, we'll give you four options. Is it less than two years, two to four years, four to six years, or older than six years? Uh, yeah, vote by clicking on screen, take you to the, the poll in the app, and we'll reveal the answers next week. And uh, let us know in the comments what you think about helmet safety as well and how important it is to you. Time now for Hot Tech. If you follow Alberto Contador or Ivan Basso on social media, you may have noticed them riding around on a rather nice looking white and black camouflage bike recently. Um, Alberto Contador, he actually broke the Everesting world record on one recently. He did, and it's finally been unveiled. It's finally here. And Alberto Contador and Ivan Basso have actually teamed up to create their own bike brand. It's called Aurum, which I'm told means gold. And the first bike from this brand is the Magma. And uh, well, it's pretty exciting because it's said to be their dream bike. And you know, I think that's pretty cool when you combine their Grand Tour winning experience together, this is described as being, you know, their ultimate bike, what they would want from a bike. Yeah, super exciting stuff. And the Aurum actually offers the Magma in six frame sizes to suit a wide spectrum of riders, ranging from a height of 158 centimetres to 196 centimetres. How tall are you? 204 centimetres. Not quite wide enough of a spectrum then. Hmm, mm. you have to have words with Contador about that. Mm. Do you have his number? Mm. 
The Magma is described as being a pure racing bike, and it kind of fits into that category of all-rounders that, that we're seeing more of. Um, so lightweight bikes that have hydraulic disc brakes, but are also semi-aero. And in terms of the aero, it's, it's had the full sort of CFD and wind tunnel treatment. So you expect it's got some you know, decent aero credentials behind that, back, backing it up. Yeah, and the frame is said to be 802 grams with a complete build coming in just under the UCI weight limit, which means it's very competitive as well. Yeah, and it's available in glacial blue or carbon uh, black or carbon nano black. And you can get it as a frame set only option for I think 4,100 euros or you can buy it in a complete build starting from I think 9,800 euros. So pretty pricey, but it isn't meant to be, you know, top end premium uh, bike. And those builds do come with like the nicest bits. So we're talking, you know, Dura Ace, E-Tap, and then lightweight wheels, Envy wheels, that kind of thing. So, oh, yeah, pretty special. Yeah, it sounds good, Ollie. And you know what? I think I like the blue as well. I'd go for the glacial blue. Well, yeah. you, well you won't, will you, unless you, unless you shrink. <laughs> Another new bike this week, Lapierre has officially launched its new air code, now in its third version. The Lapierre Air Code DRS, or Drag Reduction System. Yeah, not Decision Review System, in case you're a cricket fan and confused. Is that to do with the wicket? Or... Yeah, kind of, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> And we did actually spot this bike back in March at the Classics when we saw Guparma FDJ riding on one. Yeah, that was actually the last time uh, myself and Connor were together before this moment right now. And I did warn you, Ollie, I did warn you, no one, you didn't listen. No, I, I, I genuinely didn't think it was going to sort of lock down like it did. I thought I should go, just go to the, the pub and have a pint and it'll all blow over. Didn't. Anyway, it has a lot of interesting design features on it. Most notably um, is the seat post design, which is kind of this freestanding seat post you've got. The top tube comes in and then sort of splits into the seat stays around the seat post. And by having this sort of freestanding seat post, if you will, uh, Lapierre reckons it improves compliance over the previous Aircode SL model by around 12%. It's actually a, a kind of design feature that has come from their um, Xelius climbing bike that's been around for quite a while as well. Also, they are equipping narrower stock bars than before, and they're trying to improve aero credentials out of the box with a more aerodynamic riding position and geometry. So that means a steeper seat tube angle and a longer top tube. Mm. And it, on top of that, it's got kind of all the usual uh, aero things that we expect now from an aero bike. So you've got you know, NACA uh, tube profiles and integrated cables through the bars, stem and into the head tube um, as well. But what I want to know is what is, and you can vote on this, poll in the app, what's your favourite thing to come out of Dijon? Is it the new Lapierre Airco DRS or Mustard? Oh, I do like Dijon mustard, especially in a cheese sandwich, I tell you. Sometimes with Marmite, you get cravings, cravings for that. Well, Tangy. I know, I know which way you're voting, you weirdo. Have you never tried that before? And finally this week, SRAM has updated its 11-speed uh, red ETAP uh, rear derailleur. Yep, SRAM have quietly released an update for the 11-speed ETAP rear mech. I think outwardly it looks like the SRAM 12-speed axis rear mech with a few aesthetic changes, but it's what's on the inside that counts. Yes, and speaking of the inside, uh, the servos have been updated to be more, I think, in line with what's in the access mech. So that is supposed to mean that you get slightly sharper gear changes, slightly faster, more responsive gear changes. Um, and also it has the clutch tech that's come from access as well. So this is to help with chain management. Um, the chain is less likely to slap on the chainstay when you're you know, going over rough terrain, but it also means that the rear mech is now compatible with one by drivetrains. And I'm pretty excited about this because it means that, you know, there's loads of applications for this. Like if you're building a lightweight hill climb bike and, and you want it to be one by, then this is a great application for that. Also, um, TT bikes, you know, can benefit from being one by as well. You, like Pogaccia's TT bike was one by in the tour and it's slightly, say what, saved weight, but also it can be um, a bit more aerodynamic as well. More hot tech next week. Right, it's that time of the week. Screw riding upgrades, 
buy upgrades where you guys submit the best upgrades you've done to your bike or equipment for the chance to win the ultimate prize here at GCM, Got one here. a cycling cap. Oh, just, you got it. Not, it's not just a cycling cap, Connor. It's a GCN Castelli cycling cap. Bespoke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, I didn't do that justice. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great prize. But before we look at this week's submissions, let's take a look at last week and see who's won the all-important cap. Uh, away, yeah. Ollie. Last week was a, it was a competitive week. Right. I, it was between Novak Jumari's uh, spruced up CAD 8 Cannondale, custom painted it as well, uh, versus Will 14's refurbished commuter hack, also did a great custom paint job. There were actually comments underneath the show last week saying both of them deserve a cap. Well, fortunately that's not the way it works around here. And the winner with 58% of the vote, so it was pretty close, was Novak Jumari and his Cannondale. So get in contact uh, on Facebook and we'll get a cap out to you in the post. Nice. But this week. What's on this week? Well, I tell you what, <laughs> first up, we have a rather amazing. Okay, Ollie, I think this is brilliant because yeah. this is another Cannondale uh, CAD 8. And this has been sent in by B Wong. B Wong. B Wong. A classic <laughs> name as well. Brilliant name. I love that. Best yeah. actually I've ever had on screen yeah. upgrades. Well, I mean, he says that he, he bought it used. Um, and he, he had a great time riding on it. He had a, a Shimano 2 uh, 300 group set on it. Uh, but he said he rode it all summer and it's been a great bike for him and he got it at a bargain price. But he found that that crank, being quite old from 2013, had a crack in it and just needed totally um, replacing. And then he decided he needed some other parts as well. So he's upgraded the bike and he also decided he wanted to change the look. So he's gone down the custom paint job route, which is always respectable. It um, is. I do. mean, I think what he's done to it is amazing. I th firstly, before we get started on the paint job, I think whoever had the bike to begin with, because he bought this or someone, I think it was a bit too small for me, if I'm only, if I'm honest, Ollie. Yeah, yeah. They've got, got a, yeah, the, the saddle looks very low and there's... Um, yeah, have a good bit of space for a shopping that stem, basket. That stem's quite excited. Mm. Um, but he's, he stripped the paint, he stripped the bike, then he stripped down the... Uh, all the paint off, and then he's used um, 2K primer on there, and then he's put some gold spray on and some clear coat on top of the gold spray. So he's got like sort of gold coming through a little bit, and then he's you know done a real good job of like sourcing some used parts. He's got some old Tiagra bits on there, um, some you know 105 pedals, and some really cool old uh, C24 Jura Ace wheels with like the cup and cone mm. hubs. Like really nice. I think what does wheels. it for me, what does it for me, Ollie, is the handlebar tape and the saddle. Yeah. Just that kind of retro look with the yeah. saddle bag as well. Brooks B17 saddle and leather bar tape. Brilliant. Like it's just. It's a nice little retro mm. kind of thing, but it's nice that it's matching. Um, and also, I like that he spent money on his tyres and put on some uh, GP5000s. Because, you know, tyres are one of the best upgrades you can make in terms of bang for buck, but that's a really smart job, isn't it? Mm, I think that's going to do well on the pole, actually. I like the way that he's put the retro new Cannondale logo yeah. on there as well to update it. It's yeah. cool. I like mm. it. Um, who's he up against, though? Well, he's up against some stiff competition because this has been sent in by Hey Thomas. No, it hasn't been sent in by Hey Thomas. It's been hey, sent hey in. Hey, it's Thomas. Yeah, it has. Hey, it's Thomas. Hey, it's Thomas. Hey, it's Thomas. Hey. <laughs> well, hey, Thomas. Thanks for sending in your upgrade. <laughs> this is a brilliant old Peugeot road bike which needed some love and care, according to Hey, it's Thomas. As most of the plans for my summer vacation went out the window due to COVID, I decided to binge watch GCN maintenance videos. So he's been helped by Ollie on this one, which is always well, a good, and, yeah, good and, sign. And, and the rest of the team. And the rest of the team, excluding me probably. <laughs> but uh, it's a, cla a cracking one, this. I think uh, I just love the paint job again on this. It's both green, actually. Both Are they both green? I'm, well, I'm colorblind, so Yeah, don't I ask thought me. the Cannondale was green. You said it was black, but it's got a greeny black tint. Yeah. It? Yeah, there's a bit of gold coming through. Mm, but anyway, anyway, back to Hayes Thomas because he's ended up cold setting and DIY painting the frame uh, in racing green. So it is, yeah, it's green with brand new decals and he's replaced the group set with Shimano 105, which I think is my favourite part about this bike because it's like a retro bike with a brand new group set. Yeah. And it just does the job for me. Brilliant. Love, I'm always a sucker for a horizontal top tube as well. What about you, Ollie? That is a, that is a really classy looking mm. bike. 
that I, re I do really like. I like the little, I mean, again, with like the custom painting, but I like the way he's still got the little white Peugeot lion on the seat tube. I oh, like yeah. that. That's it's awesome. Cool. And I also love the bars. I just love that style of the bars when you have the top, the bottoms, like uh, the drops are horizontal mm. and then they like, uh, just makes it look aesthetically brilliant. Classic. Like, and, yeah. And Classic. also I know it's not to do with the bike, but the falling leaves in the background, autumnal scene. Yeah, it's a nice photo, that. Mm, yeah, so it's going to be a tough one, I think. Ooh. And you're going to have to get voting on the poll. It's not down to us. No, no it's not down to us. So who gets that cap. It's in your hands, everyone. Your hands take that cap into... Not this one. Yeah, well... Not this very one, because this one might have COVID. So it's a fresh one, mm. box fresh one. Yeah, he's coming up with the excuses now. Now time for my favourite part of the show, the Bike Vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes and then we judge them to be nice or super nice. If they're super nice, what happens, Connor? I ring the... Is it a cowbell? I think I ring the, the... I'm calling it a cowbell this week. I ring the cowbell. Connor rings the, the bell and they go into the Bike Vault for eternity. If you don't agree with our decisions, by the way, our judgments, which like, you shouldn't do because our judgment is final, but if you're weird and you do disagree with them, then you can actually vote yourself in the app as well, as, as the bike's been super nice or nice. Anyway, first up this week, we have got this Bianchi Pista. Who's this from, Connor? This is from abrahim.hd, and this is his Bianchi steel commuter in all its celeste glory. It has been eaten dust. high definition. Yes, high definition, isn't it? Uh, it's a beautiful bike. It's been eating dust the past few months because of the whole COVID work from home situation. But finally, been taken out for a that spin. Is, oh, I like that. In yeah. fact, that, that's a really nice sort of little nip around town commuter commuter bike. I do love a single speed. I like that he's got a bell on there. And it, and that's a great location. It's a great location, and I was considering like giving it a super nice, but I think if you look closely, Ollie, at the valve on the rear wheel, it's five o'clock. Oh, you are a stickler, aren't you? Mm. Not, you know, you got to. I would, I would have given that a super nice, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, you can't be really. All right, well, we have to agree. That rules is, are the rules. That I is mean. the rules, okay? We have to agree. Okay. They've been set out since nice. time began, and you know, you've got to stick to them. Anyway, nice, nice from us. Moving uh, on. Mark Wit Wittoller um, has has submitted this Candale, um, which is a Synapse or Synapse if you're from America, uh, high mod disc. Brilliant photo, I must say, in the tunnel. It's giving it quite a kind of sci-fi look, I think. Yeah. Mm, almost symmetrical, but, right, Ollie. Oh, oh here we go. Here we, here we go. go. Right. Go I on, mean, then. Get it, out, get it off your chest. I, I can see know. something's bothering you. I don't know why people do it. I mean, <laughs> look at the crank. It's at 2 p.m. Yeah. It's just like, a, a visually, it's an obvious mistake. He's it's something it. you'd look at in the photo and be like, no. But he's submitted it anyway. But it's Also, I think if we look at his, his tyres, they're like opposite opposites. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the GP yeah. 5000s, but Continentals at the top on the front one and Continentals by the valve at the bottom on the rear one. Yeah, he's got in a fuddle there. He has, hasn't the right he? right fuddle, yeah. It's the, it's the details. Mm. He's got, I mean, this is close. I mean, he's clearly put in real time and effort. He's ridden, he's mm. cleaned his bike. He's ridden to this location where he's thought, this is it, this is the bike. Mm. I'm getting in here, this is guaranteed. He's got a stick. Yeah. To hold it up. Basically, Ollie, what he's done, he's made his porridge, but he's forgotten his honey. Nice. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> Earl Young. Uh, Earl Young. Brilliant name, Earl Young. Earl Young. One yeah. Of his he's, to Hank. Uh, he's climbed up the Quad Affair as well. Great climb. Mm. Been to this um, actual spot myself. Brilliant spot as well. Yeah. yeah. But, Ollie, come on. I mean, it's the basic rule, isn't it? I mean, he's tired, he's got to the Quad Affair, but that is no excuse. Like to, to be non drive side. I know. I non know. drive side. Come on, non drive I side. I almost feel sorry for the lad, really. Have we taught you nothing? Mm, you got Carl to the top Young. of the quad of fur. Over 2,000 meters of altitude. Yeah. And he's fallen at the last hurdle. I know. He's done all the <laughs> hard like, work. He's climbed his way up quite a he's done, he's done all the hard work. Oh, oh what is that about? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I forgive him for leaving his saddlebag on. Mm. At the top of the crowd affair. I think matching matching uh, bottles as well. Yeah. You know, he's thought of everything and yeah. Sorry, oh. Earl. Sorry, Earl. Maybe another time. 
It's a, it's a nice. Um, Kevin Andre uh, has submitted his new Colnago C64. He's um, he's just built it up. Now, just had a maiden voyage on it. What do you make of that? Now, Ollie, I'll tell you what I like this. Yeah. I like it. At first, I was I was trying to draw criticisms, mm. but I'm, I'm struggling to fault it. What do you think? Well, I do love a C64. Mm. I've, I've seen them being made in the factory, and I do I do kind of sort of, sort of want a C64. Do you? Yeah. I think they're really cool bikes. I like um, the paint job on it. I think the paint job's great. I mean, that's like the paint job. It's that sort of brushed metal effect. It does remind me of um, Warhammer. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do you like Warhammer? Oh, I'm down in Games Workshop every week, mate. Just uh, you know, when I'm not filming the GCN Tech Show, that's where I hang out. I used to like Warhammer as well. Did you? I, had, I had my own little. Anyway, we're, we're digressing here. We're digressing. We all. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done stuff that we regret, Connor. He's anyway, got, he's um, got a small cassette on there, Ollie. He must live in a. What flat. is that? Yeah, he's got, he's cassette. Got a really is... strong. Or that cassette is like an eleven, thirteen cassette. <laughs> it is. It's got it? on there. <laughs> oh, uh, he's done an amazing job of lining up his valves and tire logos with the wheel logos. Um, a slight infraction. If I am being a stickler, is that front skewer lever position? Yeah, that, that's not a slight ollie, that's big. That's big, you know, <laughs> that's a big, big mistake. But there. I'm willing to let that slide because I think that is a proper cool bike and he's clearly an outrageous rider to put on that 1117 cassette or whatever it is. Just, that's super nice for me. Super nice, yeah. is it? Right, here we go. That, that was loud enough, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Next up. Lastly this week, who have we got? Right, we've got Winter Training Pain Cave by user 123891. Classic name. And oh, God. What, what's what this, Ollie? Well, this? right, I think, Ollie, we need to put a stop to this before it gets out of hand. A what to bike? To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where do we start, you know? Connor, a what bike? Also, that is the most miserable pain cave. Ever. Firstly, there's a, a, it looks like there's a, a very, very clear and present danger of splinters. A definite danger. In there. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not sure what's going on with the light. It looks like Luke Skywalker's been it's, in it's there. A, yeah, there's a, a lightsaber. Obi Wan's um, kind of in, had a, a session on the bike and uh, gone no, a bit feral. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no entertainment screens in there. There's no fans. Mm. That look, that looks like also the most miserable pain cave. Not even got any hydration. No bottles on there. He's a, he's a masochist, masochist, masochistic. I tell you, um, but fair play. Anyway, he's got a plug in front of him. Anyway, if he does want to get a fan, hasn't chosen one. Uh, uh, we don't know where we, to start. We, but we can't, if we let this in, we can't. Let, that is not going in the bike. No, it's opening. Nice. It's opening the dog. It's opening the the gate rather to a whole yeah. manner of things. You know. So yeah. No. 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 no that is no, a nice. No. Nice. I'm not even barely. A, begr a begrudging nice. Only just. Yeah. <laughs> By the slimmest of margins. Yeah. Anyway, more Bike Vault next week. Hopefully, no submissions like that ever again. Um, but yeah, keep your submissions coming. Um, we do get loads, so if you do submit and your bike doesn't make it in, then well, you can persevere, try and submit it again. Hopefully, we'll be able to feature your bike. And unfortunately, that is now time for the end of the show. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's been good having you on, Connor. Thanks for making the, doing the swim. Yeah, it's been great here. to be back. I'm um, just drying my shorts. Anyway, I'm going to go for another swim, actually, just to cool down. But it's been great to be back in the studio with you, Ollie. Nice. And if you are into live racing and would like to watch the Giro d'Italia, which starts this weekend. Ma this compacted race season is mental, isn't it? It's mad, it? isn't it? Blink and you miss it. Yeah. Well, Connor's done a preview show as a previous rider in the Giro d'Italia. I wouldn't say I raced it. I'd say I kind of got round it. <laughs> Well, it's more its more than I've done, so I think fair play. But if uh, if you want to watch this year and tell your coverage, then you can do on Race Pass. But there are territory restrictions, so please check what's available where you are. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, everyone.